All right, guys, welcome to Walmart. Um, I wasn't going to record anything. I didn't bring my cameras with me. Okay, whatever. 20 miles, 46 minutes, 244 watt hours per mile. Um, what an interesting drive today. So, for the first time in almost two months, we finally got some moisture dropping out of the sky. Um, it, it's a sprinkle. Flight sprinkle. Right? Um... <laughs> And they said it was a 10% chance of rain. I guess that's a little bit better than what they thought. The weatherman, that is. Okay, so coming up Loman Ford, no problems. The wiper every once in a while would wipe and clean it. Um, turning on to 1431, uh, I don't know. Do you blame Tesla or FST? I don't know which one. Um, all of a sudden, it, start, it wiped several times, and that popped up the FST maybe degraded message. Um, but it had no impact other than, of course, the sound of the alarm. Um, typical. I, I was kind of expecting he might do it sooner or later, and that's when he did it. And, and I know once you do, let's say, two wipes, that's what triggers the, uh, the that message. Right? It's not so much about the rain. It's about that. So, no big deal. Just slide it to minimize it. No big just move on. Um, coming up on the construction zone, there was a space that was open to the left. Human driver, left turn signal. Let's try to move over to the inside lane. First time FSD ignored it. Second time FSD said, oh, you must be serious. Well, yeah. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, coming out of the construction zone, there, the car that I cut off to get into the inside lane, so to speak, um, he was he was wanting to go. Okay, let's move over to the right. Give him a room. What? Oh, okay. Break on FSD. I'll move the car myself. I'm not sure why FSD couldn't handle it, but he couldn't. Uh, coming through Jonestown, for some reason, there's a lot of traffic this afternoon. I don't know. So, coming through Jonestown, I get, I'm in the outside lane, I get kind of stuck behind a dump truck. It looked like it was empty, but um, whatever. Um, so, there's a line of cars going by on my left. Finally, there was a spot that opened up briefly, left turn signal, let's move the car. FSD agreed to it. Okay, good. Um, coming through Cedar Park, not really a big deal, other than where did all these people come from? Of course, it is three. I guess people, kids are getting out of school, stuff like that, whatever. All right. So, coming up to the private entrance to go up to Walmart. So, actually, these aisles have numbers. So, aisle number 11 has a stop sign halfway in between. That's the one that's next east from that main road that goes up to the Walmart. For some reason, FSD doesn't like taking that main road. And I, I, if people stack up at the stop sign, you're, you're going to be stuck. Okay, whatever. For some reason, he didn't take row 11. He moved one more down, took row 12. Okay, that's cool. That's, that's different. So as we drive up, there's a guy who comes in. And he's going to park, I guess, so he's backing into his parking space. Look, I can back in too. Yeah. I don't like waiting for FSD to do it, so I usually just pull straight into a space if I got room. But anyway, what's interesting is, at first FSD's going, oh, it's going to be okay. And then FSD, looking at his backup lights, says, oh, we better stop. Okay, that's pretty good. Let me check this. Okay, yeah, I'm still on 12.3.6. I'm telling you this, and it's like, it's an updated FSD. Okay? It's different. It's yet again different. Uh, anyway, so after that, that guy finally backs into his space, we start going again. So there's two ladies walking up the, the road. What is he doing? 
I don't know. But it's the girls? No, it's Jeeps. Okay, whatever. Sorry, I just that truck, he pulled into the parking spaces, which meant he was coming right at me. Sorry to be distracted easily by, like that. Anyway, so the, there's the two ladies walking up. All of a sudden, I noticed that the one closest to me turns black on the display. So I'm thinking that when, when a pedestrian turns black on the display, that means they're closer. Or they're they're dangerous, more dangerously close. Let's put it that way. Just a curiosity. So as these two ladies are walking up, um, the one goes around the corner. Well, the, the one that was dark went around the corner or moved up a little bit. And then the other lady was closer and she turned black. Wow, that was an interesting observation. I'm sorry. I really wish I'd brought my camera now. <laughs> it it would be. It's interesting to see this stuff. Okay. It's cool. All right. So when we come up around the corner and we come up to the home and pharmacy entrance, there's a bunch of people going back and forth. Okay. You just stop and wait for them all to go. Fi- finally, there's a clear space. We move forward. As we move forward, there's there's something. Oh, there's two two more uh, pedestrians. They're they're walking down the drive. Well, we come. There's a there's a lane coming up, and there's a pickup waiting to make a left turn out of it. FSD stops, gives that pickup room to go, knowing that we can't really go because of the two pedestrians in front of us. Okay, that was pretty cool. You know, that was, that was nice. Yes, FSD does nice things. And sometimes Mr. Ray allows FSD to do those nice things. I'm sorry, Opa Ray. Okay, whatever. Um, as we're coming up, I guess we're about the middle of the store. No, we're just past the middle of the store. So we're almost out to the uh, grocery entrance, which is on the east side of the building. Or the east side of the southeast side. Um, you could feel FSD was computing something because he kind of slowed down and the, the steering wheel's jerking. All of a sudden, he makes a right turn down the lane. Really? Now, navigation so shows that he's going to make a loop around. Okay. There's a bunch of parking spaces op- open down here. I just do a break on FSD off. Let's go park. Okay. But here's what I'm telling you is his handling of Walmart today was really pretty good. I'm kind of stunned. Now, did he park on his own? No, he didn't park on his own. At first, I thought that might be what he was thinking, but that's not what he was thinking. I I don't know why he was going to do loop around. He was close enough to the entrance where he could have, you could have just got out. Okay. So there is that part. Anyway, I, I think it's cool. Awesome. And you know what? People are just cutting through the parking spaces here. And then they come across my car and go like, Oh, what do I do now? Well, if you just stayed on the drive part, you wouldn't have had that problem, right? It's not like there's other cars blocking them. Anyway, peace and harmony. Here's knock on wood. Hope it all works out. Um, Almost certainly the the school zone will be active at the high school. Okay, so, oh, maybe maybe we'll just take a detour, go around down uh, Thunderbird. I I don't want to experience an active school zone on this drive. Okay, there you go. I word up for charge. Okay, guys, welcome home. Twenty miles, forty minutes, two hundred four watt hours per mile. 
Uh, for those of you who don't know, 200 is five miles per kilowatt hour. Um, let's see, since last charge is 49 miles. No, that's not going to matter. It's the 40 miles, nine kilowatt hours, 228 watt hours per mile. Yes, yeah, so I remember right, we use more energy going out than coming back. Um, or average. So where are we? Um, I think the, uh, so no, that's not fair. So for some reason, FSD was acting a little bit scared coming back. So he was less able to keep speed limit speed. I don't know. I mean, and I did do a break on FC off to switch lanes. Cause, but we were kind of close to the car in front of me. I didn't get the turn signal on soon enough to get him to go over. Now, that makes it sound like I'm always having to push the car left or right. Um, but he has, on this trip, he has he shifted lanes a couple of times on, on his own. Um, which was good. I mean, we want that. So there you go. There's that part. Um, I took the the uh, Thunderbird workaround, if you want to call it that. I hate to call it the shortcut because it's not. It actually takes longer usually. Um, although I think we do save like half a mile or something. But I did that to avoid going by the high school because I don't want the active school zone. Okay, so there we go. There's all of that part. Uh, today, the car did not pull into my driveway. Instead, what he did was he, he kind of pulled a little bit to the side. But I think he also doesn't want to go in the grass. And so, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a little secret. Lago Vista is a small town. Or at least sort of, kind of. So, a lot of our roads are two-lane with... And it's dirt on either side, or dirt or grass. Okay? So if you want to pull off the road, you got to pull off onto dirt. And FSD absolutely hates pulling on the dirt. Well, I should say Tesla, but whichever one. You know what I mean. Okay, so there's there you go. There's that part. Um, did FSD do anything absolutely... Well, absolutely stupid? No. Did he do anything dumb? Not really. Was there anything that was I wouldn't have agreed with? There was a lane shift that he did, and um, I thought he did it too early. He did it too aggressively. And what happened was, when we came up to a traffic light, knowing that we had to get to the left, I pressed the accelerator to get him going. And once, as soon as he saw there was space... He had left turn signal on, he's going over. And then, because I left my foot off the accelerator, he slowed down, and the car we got in front of didn't appreciate it one bit. But oddly enough, that car didn't choose to go around us. Um, so when there was a space opened up on the left, so we're in the middle lane with that car. When space opened up to the left, I used the turn signal, moved the car to the left, and as soon as I did, that car, boom, gone. Okay, not gone, gone, but he quickly went by us. So like I said, I don't know. Why Why didn't you just go? All right. So with that said, I hate to give him an A. I don't think it's that good. But we can give him a B today. It was, for the most part, it was pretty good. Okay, I'll wrap up a charge. Oh, I think it's uh, Nissan. I'll have to look at him, but a Nissan Rogue is your ice comparison vehicle. He, he made sure he got volunteered. All right, guys, how's it going? So today's trip was 40 miles, used nine kilowatt hours. Of course, that means the energy cost was 99 cents. Uh, interestingly enough, gas prices seem to be around $2.60. And just one day ago, it was 280. So, wow, okay. Anyway, whatever, this works out to be 0.4 gallons. Okay, our today's ice comparison is a 2024 Nissan Rogue. Um, I think I've done a Rogue before, but 
especially when I came up with the 33 miles per gallon. Okay. Yeah. Um, so 33 miles per gallon works out that you can get third 13 miles. Every time I look at that, that doesn't seem right, but it's only 0.4 gallons. Okay. Anyway, so, um, I, I searched around trying to figure out how from my house to, to find something that makes sense. So in Treviso, there's a Leander fire station, number five. Would you go there? No, but it's about that. It's about that 13 miles. Okay. And yes, you get there and then what? Uh Oh, you're out of gas, but you guys know that already, right? All right. So the trip, if you wanted to do the trip, it would take 1.2 gallons and cost $3.12. And if you gave me $3.12 of electricity, I could go 113 miles. Okay. Um, so the, the tank size on this Rogue is 14 and a half gallons. So it cost $37.70 to fill it up from completely empty to completely full. And that could take you 478 miles. Well, that's real close to 500. It's not 500, but it's close. Um, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. But on this one, it actually came up with a, a rating for crashes. So the crash, he's a five star. Uh, there's a spot in there where it has a yellow. Indicating it's not perfect. But hey, at least it's a five star. Okay, so back to the cost, cost of the car. The, and, and I'm not sure I got this right, but it seemed like the ones I saw advertised, the middle of the pack, so to speak, was 34,000. Okay, it starts at 30,000, it goes up to 40. But 34,000 looked like a good number. All right, so compare that to uh, Model 3. In this case, we're comparing to a Model 3 long-range rear-wheel drive, right? Uh, the Rogue's not a sporty car. It's just it's just a car. Actually, it's an, a small SUV. So this may not be exactly a right, right comparison. But anyway, so a Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive, brand new, with you eligible for the... Uh, IRS tax rebate of 7,500, it comes out to 35,000. So it costs about $1,000 more, but you don't have to buy gas anymore. In fact, your energy source is electricity, which is much cheaper. Okay, so looking at it that way, why would you buy a Rogue? Now, I assume that this, this car was not actually a 2024, it was an older model. But in this case, I'd, I'd rather stick with comparing new cars. Because the real question is, if you're getting ready to buy a new car, what makes sense for you? Okay. What? Oh, come on. All right, you're right. So for many of us, a Model Y is actually a better choice. Model Y cost about a thousand dollars more right now. Um, I don't know how fair that is or how it would work out in your situation, but it looks like when I look at inventory in Austin, it, okay, it may, it may be a little over a thousand, but it's it's in that ballpark, okay. Uh, and so, what do you get if you get a Model Y instead of Model Three? The car sits higher, the roof, the roof line's higher, the door is higher, so it's easier to get in and out of it. Much easier to get in and out, in and out of a Model Y as opposed to a Model 3. Okay, so there you go. There's that part. There's that part. Um, in fact, if I were to buy a new car right now, yes, I want to go get a Model 3 long-range rear-wheel drive. Right, but I I don't want to pay I want to pay a low price for it. So um, at the moment I'm having a hard time finding it, and I'm having a hard time just finding it to myself. 
but there you go. If, if I wasn't worried about anything else, would I get a Model 3 or a Model Y? For, for robo-taxi purposes, I'd get a Model Y. Much more comfortable for your, your passengers. Okay? It's that easy. Okay, onward upward charge. Uh, yeah, you know, I understand Tesla's not for everybody, okay? And there are other choices, okay? The Ford Mach-E sounds like a fairly reasonable choice, actually. I mean, you can't get FSD with it, but is that an important factor for you? And that's a good question. I don't know. For me, FSC actually is a big factor because what I'm hoping for is to turn them in, turn my cars into robo taxis, start making money, to justify why I have cars in the first place. Yeah, no, okay. Yes, I have to drive around, but. I mean, if I start in RoboTaxi, I'm probably buying a third car pretty soon. So we'll see how it all works out. Um, anyway, there you go. What? Oh, well, yes, I'm still on FSD 12.3.6. This is not part of the ice comparison. It's just the ongoing saga of where is FSD? But FSD 13 has been promised for, for October. So within two weeks, we'll be out of October. Okay, and 13 will be the, in, at least in theory, will be the GA release for FSD. So there you go. There's that part. Anyway, I'm going to charge. Um, you know, as always, if, if you're in the Central Texas area, I'd be more than happy to meet up with you. And, and um, if you need to have a chance, I can give you a chance to drive a car. There you go.